Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I have heard and seen a lot of stuff that are very negative. Um, so for people who are either A, wheelchair bound, or B, um, have DBS, don't feel like you're alone. And if you guys don't know what GBS is, it's Garnier-Barre syndrome, which is an autoimmune disease. And basically what it is, is your autoimmune system is trying, attacking itself because they think something isn't right. So your system will, your lower half or upper part will start going first. I know for me, my lower half went and they were scared it was going to spread up into my respiratory system. Now, for some people, it starts with the hands and they'll just goes from there. Um, I know there's a lot of a lot of people who have been either a cyber bullied, um, bullied in just physical or emotional ways. I know for me, learning how to walk again was extremely extremely um, depressing for me because I was like I've been wheelchair bound. Like, what do I do? Like. I still had a little bit of movement, but I couldn't walk without dragging my feet. I would drag my feet constantly because I could not feel the ground. And I was, I literally was at school when I, I found out that I couldn't walk. Like, I could walk a little bit, but I wound up falling. And when that happened, my nurse at my school told me I was to immediately go to the hospital that she would be putting me in a wheelchair and say, calling my mom, telling her to come pick me up. My pediatric doctor, Dr. Mefford, um, she didn't know what was wrong. So basically what she told me was that we had to go to the hospital, especially since I am an open heart surgery patient who has had their open heart surgery at the age of six. They were scared that if I did wind up losing all feeling and all mobility and my brain was shutting down, that I would be damaged, it would damage my heart. Um, so for the most part, that didn't happen. I just couldn't feel anything below the waist. I still sometimes have issues with like numbness in my legs. It's not GBS, I know that. But we have no clue what is going on. But my whole entire face, my arms to my le my feet will go numb. I won't be able to feel them. My last episode lasted three days last week. And it kind of sucked. Because I'm just like, you are doing fine for like almost two, three, four months or weeks. Like for me, I know my last episode, my episode before last one was on 4th of July. I literally cried the whole day. I was like, it's supposed to be independent today. Like, why is this happening? Like, yeah, a guy killed himself before um, 4th of July and stuff like that. I have a one. Um, but yeah, I want to let people know that you can regain your independence no matter if you were found or not. Like, for me, I had to learn how to do everything by myself again. Like, I had a support system. My parents were there for me. I literally had so much issues getting dressed that I literally just stayed in clothes that I had worn before because I was so terrified and petrified that this happened to me. And not long after, and a year before I was diagnosed with GBS, I was in a super bad accident. I was with my mom, and we were going to pick up my sister, and the car in front of me, or the car in front of us stopped, and the car behind us didn't, so we were in a collision where our car moved forward, hit the guy in front of us, and the guy, and the person, her car hit us in the, from the rear, so that kind of gave me like a headache, my neck was hurting a little bit, I thought it was nothing. My neck was fine a couple days later, and then two years down the road, I was diagnosed with GPS. Um, and it's currently 
I was diagnosed, I believe, in 2016, 2017. I am not poor sure. It is 2019 now. But, yeah. Um, just putting this out there. If you think that it's okay to um, bully people into killing themselves, please don't. Like, I have lived through many trials and errors and I have been down some pretty sketchy roads. Um, when I was diagnosed with GBS, I started just being super depressed. I, that's kind of, I was put on painkillers. I literally took tons and tons of painkillers. I used to do drugs. Like I would take Tylenol and my painkillers every day. And it got to a point where I had to go to rehab. Like, I don't talk about my rehab because of the fact that my mom didn't send me to rehab. I was put in a emotional support group at my school for stuff like that. But, you know, life happens and things happen. Like, no matter what, like, just know that you're loved, you're supported, no matter if you're paralyzed still or not. It takes a lot to learn how to walk again. And I basically couldn't feel from here, like, where my stomach, the end of my like, belly button right here, down, I cannot feel. And it made me super depressed. I was crying all the time. I literally had the neurologist come in and I was bawling. He's like, why are you crying? Like, I was like, I'm, I'm sad that I can't walk. Like, I was isolated and I was put in the IC unit for almost a week. But not, like a week before I was hospitalized. I had got my wisdom teeth removed, but I also had my flu shot the week before I got my wisdom teeth removed. I got all four of my wisdom, wisdom ugh, I've got all four of my wisdom teeth removed, and we didn't know if it was the flu shot or the fact that I um, had my wisdom teeth removed. We have finally figured out it was the flu shot, so I am no longer allowed to get a flu shot. Which is why I avoid people when they sit. They're sick. It's that and I always wash my hands and I always Jermex myself. I literally took a Jermex bath one night just because I was like around sick kid, a sick kid. Um, I'm just like, I'm not about to get sick. Like, this is not happening. So, yeah. Um, basically, I was... I was in ROTC whenever I first realized that I was having issues standing up, filling my legs, and it was at the end of our class that I was like, hey, I talked to my CO, I was like, hey, CO, I'm having issues, like, I can't fill my lower half. She's like, oh, your legs probably just went to sleep, like, this and that, it's fine, you'll be able to fill them in a couple minutes once you start walking to your next class got to my next class and I literally sat there while we were doing experiments and stuff and I was like I can't put my legs. Lunch rolls around and I get to lunch. I tried standing and getting ready to go into my lunch line because at that time yeah I think it was no it was it was my sophomore year I was getting ready to head out for lunch but I was like I was having issues feeling my lower half and I wound up collapsing, and my friend basically came and picked me up. He is actually my best gay friend ever. Bless his heart. He helped me, um, helped me learn, like, he let me lean on him, like, he took me to the nurse. He's like, actually, he didn't take me to the nurse. He actually had a friend go get the nurse, but yet we were halfway there when the nurse came and got me. Um, basically from there, I was immediately put in a wheelchair. My mom was called. I was told to get out of my ROTC uniform, which I did. And I had, thankfully, shorts and a t-shirt in my backpack because at that time I was going to go, I was smoking really, really badly. 
um, I had started smoking my freshman year, just like a hit or, th- hit or two there. My sophomore year, I took the biggest, like I smoked a whole complete cigarette by myself. And then after, and then after, and then after smoking one cigarette, it went to two, to three, and then before I knew it, I was smoking maybe almost a pack a day. I wound up quitting and just went to vaping, and now that, that was before I was paralyzed. And, um, basically, um, that's kind of when I started getting into my drug phase where I was super depressed, like, I was like, I'm never going to get my independence back, but, you know, I wound up getting my independence back, um, we honestly need to realize that people out there who are wheelchair bound or not, um, deserve the utmost respect, like, they do their best, they try their hardest for us to not judge and, like, have basically their breakdowns, like, they have, there's days they don't want to crawl out of bed, there's days I didn't want to crawl out of bed when I was paralyzed, but, you know, we have to keep going, we have to hit the grind, and whether or not that disqualifies me from the military or not, I would rather share my story I would rather let people know that they're not alone. That just because you're paralyzed and you learn to walk again, that shouldn't stop you from being you. Thank you, and if there's anything else you guys want me to do or make videos of, please, please let me know. I know my comments are dis- disabled right now, but I promise you I will get back to you guys if you message me. Um... Um, give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video family